نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا ولا أنا محمد ولا عال سل على سيدنا ولا أنا محمد بارك سم سل عليه سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شاء الله we'll continue talking about Prophet Musa alayhi salam and last time we we were talking and we got to the point where he was growing up in the house or the, in the palace of Firaun you know when uh, his mother initially when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he says to, to inspired his mother to suckle him and then when she feared for him put him in the box and place him in the river and send him downstream and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells her again at that point that he will send him and he will be taken up uh, by an enemy uh, and and tells her not to fear uh, and he says that he will be raised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he, uh, that he'll be raised under his guidance or under his uh, supervision under the supervision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself uh, and so even though he's raised in the palace of Firaun, Firaun is not raising him and Firaun in reality doesn't really want anything to do with him you know he's accommodating Musa al-Islam because of his wife you know the insistence of his wife who you know, saw this child and fell in love with this child and uh, uh, you know wants to take this child as, as, as a son and of course, you know, as we spoke about last time, the Firaun ends up hiring Musa al-Islam's own mother to nurse him because he would not nurse from anybody else. And when before that, he when he arrived, uh, you know, he had placed before him some jewels and some red hot coals, testing him, seeing who this child really was. And as Musa al-Islam was reaching for the jewels, uh, Jibreel al-Islam shifted his hand toward the the coals and placed that in his mouth uh, which burned his tongue you know, which is why he spoke uh, for most of his life with this or most of his young life with a speech impediment uh, this is interesting because when his mother placed him in the oven he didn't burn and yet the, st the coals burned his tongue you know, and this again you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, cools certain fires and other fire this other the coals he allowed to burn his tongue because if it did not burn his tongue then Firaun would again know who this child is and would immediately proceed to kill the child so when he became a young man you know he's he's raised in the palace in isolation from from the rest of society uh, he doesn't really get out uh, mixed with anybody but one day and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the wording in the Quran he says that you know they when it, while they were unapparent you know it was unapparent to all everybody else he leaves the palace he goes outside uh, walking around the city and in this process he he sees two men fighting you know one is from the children of Israel and the other is an Egyptian and Musa al Islam, even though he's raised in the palace, it was very obvious who he, which group he belonged to, you know, from his features. You know, he was from the children of Israel, uh, and so the person who's from the children of Israel, he calls out for help, calling out to Musa al Islam, and Musa al Islam goes to intervene into the in the situation, and in this process. You know, while trying to stop the Egyptian from abusing the the person from the children of Israel, Musa al-Islam punches him, uh, and he punches him so hard that he kills him. And of course, you know, the strength of the prophets is 
much more significant than the strength of anyone else. And so this Egyptian man, he dies. And this was not the intention of Musa alayhi salam. You know, he was simply trying to stop him. And when this happens, you know, he, you know, it's late. Uh, and Musa al-Islam immediately he asked Allah subhanahu for forgiveness for this was not his intention. And he doesn't go back to the palace. You know, of course, news spreads very rapidly throughout the city. You know, the children of Israel are overjoyed with having a hero of their own. You know, someone to defend them. And the Egyptians are upset because one of their own was killed. And so, the next day, you know, as Musa al-Islam is still traveling through the city, you know, he sees this same man, the same man from the children of Israel, again in another argument with someone else who's from the, from the Egyptians, uh, and again calls out for, for aid. And now when Musa al-Islam comes there and tries to defuse the situation, you know, the Egyptian says, are you going to kill me like you killed the one last night? And so, while this is going on, there's a man who comes running, you know, who's from the palace. He comes running to Musa al-Islam, and this was, this was one of those, you know, of course, Musa al-Islam growing up in the palace, he gets those people, you know, you, you end up with those people who are lenient toward you, you know, who, you know, like you, and so, you know, they, they want good for you even though they may belong to the other side, technically. And so this was one of those men who comes running to Musa al-Islam and he says, look, you know, news has spread of what, you, what happened last night, you know, and the, the chiefs, you know, Pharaoh and his cronies, or Pharaoh and his uh, yes-men, uh, Haman and Qarun and all of these guys, you know, they are, they are planning to execute you. And so this is when Musa al-Islam, he runs off. He takes off out of Egypt and, you know, crosses the, the border and eventually ends up in uh, Madian or uh, Medayan uh, in English, uh, which was northeastern Arabia. Uh, and this was a land populated by Arabs. And the prophet there was Shu'ayb al-Islam. You know, four prophets who were Arabs. Uh, the first, of course, was Hud al-Islam. Uh, the next was Saleh al-Islam. And then the third was Shu'ayb al-Islam. And the last and the greatest of all prophets, of course, was Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Musa al-Islam, he enters this land, you know, he's walking, and then he comes to a well that is being you know, used by the shepherds there, and the shepherds are, are watering their flocks at this well. And he sees two women, two young women who are trying to hold their flocks back, uh, flocks of sheep and goat, goats. And you know, Musa al-Islam, he thought this was very odd, you know, that women should, women should be out doing this type of work. Uh, and also that they're having to wait until all of these other men finish their, you know, with their flocks before they can get in and, and water their flocks. And so, or their herds. And so, you know, he comes up to the women, uh, you know, in a very modest way. And he asks him, he says, what is this, what is your situation? You know, why are you having to wait like this? And so they tell, that, they tell him that, you know, our father is very old and he's unable to manage these tasks. Uh, and so we're having to, to do this. So he takes the herds and the flock of sheep and, and, and goats and he takes their, their animals and he waters them. Allows them to drink and then he brings them back. And so these two women, they, they leave with their animals, grateful for what Musa al-Islam has done and go back to their father. Musa al-Islam in the meantime he goes and sits in the shade and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him and provide a way for him you know, in this strange land. And so shortly thereafter 
one of those women, he, she walk, comes walking back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He describes the way she walks. You know, He says that she walked bashfully or modestly. You know, and this is very significant because, you know, of course, the Quran is not very long. You know, if you look at, you know, the, the size of the Quran, it's not a very big book. And yet everything is contained within the book. All the knowledge is contained within the book. And so, you know, every word, every letter, every dot is significant. You know, why Allah SWT said something in one way and not another way, why one word was used in another word, or why a word was used altogether, you know, instead of it being left out. You know, he could have simply said that she walked to him, or she came to him. But he describes the way she walked to him, you know, that she walked modestly, you know, emphasizing, you know, this, uh, the, 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 the nature of, of, of what women should be, uh, and the hijab itself. And so, you know, she walks in this manner to Musa al-Islam and she tells him that her father has asked him to come and meet him. You know, they told, because when they go to their father, they say to their father, they say that, you know, what a better person, you know, that you can hire than someone who is strong and trustworthy. You know, so they're pushing uh, this, you know, to their father that, you know, you need to hire him, you know, to look after the animals. And, and you know, this is a man who is strong and he's trustworthy. I mean, this is not someone who's going to take advantage of, of the situation. You know, and so, you know, Shu'aib salam you know, the people that he was sent to, you know, of course, this is an, an Arab uh, society, uh, but the people there were a group of people who used to cheat uh, in measurements and weights, uh, and they would also, uh, you know, loot caravans and stuff. So basically kind of a, a, a clan of thieves. Uh, and they would cheat each other and they would cheat anybody else. And when Shu'aib al-Islam, he came to them, and he's trying to preach to them, and they, of course, uh, abuse him and, and uh, uh, threaten him, uh, saying that, you know, if it wasn't for his family, they would have, you know, thrown him out or cast him out. But um, he, of course, says that, is my family greater than Allah? You know, you should be, you should be grateful to Allah, and you should be thankful and, and uh, follow his commands. But they wouldn't listen. So he, like most other prophets, you know, had a very few following, you know, and just a handful of people that actually listened and followed him. And most of those were family members. You know, and the rest of them were doing whatever they wanted to do. So Musa al-Islam, when he comes to him, you know, they talk, and Shu'aib al-Islam realizes who this is. And so he says to him, he says that, you know, you know, I will w marry you to one of my daughters, you know, under the condition that you, you know, work for me for eight years. And if you make it ten, then that would be, you know, great. Uh, be your grace upon me. And so Musa al-Islam agrees to the terms. Uh, and he works for, for his father-in-law for, for ten years. Uh, if you look at the story of... Uh, one of the grandsons or great 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 grandsons of Rasulullah sallam, said that Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi you know if you look at the story of his father it very much parallels this this incident here so after the term is up you know and you know he's been working there so now Musa al-Islam he uh, along with his family his wife and daughter they leave and as they're, you know, on their way in this journey that they take, you know, they stop at a place and Musa al-Islam, he sees this fire burning at a distance. And so he tells his wife and his family, he says that, let me go and see if maybe I can get some fire, so that way, you know, we can cook some food or something, we can use it. Or, you know, interesting thing, statement he makes, he says, I'll go and maybe I can get some fire or I can get some guidance. And so, you know, he walks off to the distance and as he approaches this uh, fire, 
you know, he hears a voice coming. And the voice is, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says that, O oh Musa, addressing Musa al Islam, Ya Musa, you know, I am your Lord. You know. And then he instructs him to take his shoes off. Because he says, This is the sacred valley of Thua. You know, this is sacred ground, so take your shoes off. And this is why when we enter the sacred places, we take our shoes off. And so he takes his shoes off. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, tells him, he says, Inni anullah la ilaha illa ana. That indeed I am, you know, the God, uh, or, or I am, you know, Allah, indeed I am Allah. La ilaha illa ana uh, That there is no deity except me And he also before this he tells him You know he says listen carefully Because you are going to receive instruction you know, And heed to that instruction So you know we find this and, You know if you read surah Taha Surah number 20 Also surah number 26 uh, Shu'ara And surah number 28 in Surah Qasas, you know, all of this is contained within within these uh, suar uh, or these surahs, and so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, ask him the famous question, you know, wa ma tilke be wa ma tilke ya Musa, you know, what is in your right hand, O Musa, you know, and Musa al Islam. You know, he could have simply said, you know, it's my staff. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what's in his hand, but he wants everybody else to understand what is in his hand. Uh, so he asked him the question. And this is an important point to understand, that questions aren't asked because the questioner doesn't know. You know, that may be why the questioner is asking the question, because they don't know. But depending on who's asking the question, you know, many times the question is asked because, you know, something needs to be made apparent to everybody else. Or the questioner is asking because he likes the way that the questioned answers the question. But here again, Musa al Islam could, simply could have said, I have a staff, but he doesn't say that. He says, This is my staff upon which I lean, you know, and I also use it to break the limbs to, to feed the flocks. You know. And I have other uses for it. He doesn't even stop. He has said, and there are many other things I do with it. You know, because Musa al Islam was so engrossed in this conversation with his Lord that he didn't want it to end. So even the answers that he gives are lo are, lo are are long worded. You know, and just you know, just keep on going. You know, what could have been a simple answer, he extends on. Because he doesn't want this conversation with his Lord to end. And so, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells him, to, okay, you know, throw the staff down. And so he casts down the staff, and, and suddenly the staff becomes this serpent, you know, moving about. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pick it up and do not fear, and it will become a staff again. So again, Musa al Islam picks it up, and again, it's a staff. He orders him to place his right hand in his uh, side, and then pull it out, and it, it is glowing, you know, a, a light shining. And he says, these are two signs. And he instructs him to start to go to Fir'aun, to go and preach. And Musa al Islam, he says, you know, Rabbish Sahri Sadri. That, oh Allah, expand my test. Rabbish Sahri Sadri. That expand my chest for me. Now, this is a metaphorical term. It doesn't mean, okay, you know, do surgery and open up my chest. You know, this is expand my chest, meaning make it broad so it can encompass and, and take in all of, uh, you know, all of this knowledge, but also make it broad so I can take in all of your love. You know, like, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing Rasulullah so that we expanded for you your chest. Musa al-Islam is asking the same thing. Oh Allah, uh, for, for Rasulullah so he didn't have to ask. Yet Musa al-Islam is asking, Oh Allah, expand my chest for me. And then he asks him, he says, you know, he also says that, you know, I have this speech impediment, so correct that for me. And, you know, I, I, give me a, 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 a wazir or a right hand or a vice chair, you know, who will go with me, who will, strength, who will be my strength, you know, who will strengthen my, my case and my cause and help me in this endeavor. You know, and make him among from my family and make him Harun. Al-Salam. And that they, you know, the Egyptians, they have a case against me. And so Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that I have granted you all of this. And then he orders the two of them. You know, that you, O oh Musa, you and Harun go to, to Fir'aun. You know, but he says, he says, Speak, and this is very, very significant. He says, speak to him gently. You know, speak to him in a very mild manner. You know, do not be harsh with him. Speak to him gently that he may, perhaps he will uh, heed the warning. Uh, this is something very important. I mean, this is Fir'aun, whom Allah SWT has already said to Musa Adam, that he's transgressed all bounds. Yet when you go to him, speak to him gently. So we need to remember this when we're speaking to anybody. There are certain limits beyond which, okay, yeah, that's a limit behind, beyond which you don't speak to someone gently. Uh, and especially when it comes to the honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, because the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi taught us how to speak to those, you know, who violate the honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But until they transgress certain bounds, then the command is, speak to them gently. Even though Allah Subhanahu says, yes, he's transgressed all bounds, but there were certain bounds he had not transgressed. Uh, and we're going to get to that when Musa al-Islam addresses him. Uh, now, for me personally, it's not clear exactly how Harun al-Islam comes into this, whether he Allah subhanahu wa sent him there with Musa al-Islam where he is in Thua or Musa al-Islam comes and joins him later yeah. and then they go together but they are instructed both of them to go to Fir'aun and to address him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when, when they say that you know he may be harsh or, or you know even kill us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him don't fear you know, for I am seeing this you know, the thing is, you know, he's telling them to go future tense. But then when he talks about the situation itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses that in, a pres in the present tense. Because for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, past and future have no meaning. Everything is before him. Uh, and so, he is addressing uh, Fir'aun, uh, he is addressing Musa al-Islam and Harun al-Islam that you go and I am already seeing you there and so inshallah next time we'll kind of pick up from where they go and, and address Fir'aun uh, and the conversation there uh, but uh, you know again many lessons from all of this and one of the other interesting things is that you know, Musa al-Islam, when he leaves Thua, he leaves his wife and his daughter there, you know, where they were. The order is go to Fir'aun, and he leaves to Fir'aun right from there, you know, without going back to his family. You know, and this is a special thing about the family itself, you know, that they could withstand uh, this you know, without complaining. And, and we see this as, as a reflection of the family of Abu Bakr, you know, that he spent everything he had upon Rasulullah Everything he had. All the time, all the money, everything he had, he spent on Rasulullah And yet his family was such that they never complained. Yeah. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand, you know, and give us guidance and uh, help us uh, through the rest of this month of Ramadan, which is almost ending. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa ala Muhammadin wa ala Sayyidina Sayyidina ala Muhammadin Barak sallam sallam wa ala Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhuriyatin Rabbana wa taqabla dhu'a Rabbana dhalamna anfusna wa illam tawfil lana wa tarhamna lanakunna min al-khawasili Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirata hasanatan wa kina adhaab al-nar Rabbana aghfir li wa la waladaya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumu al-hasab open our chest and allow us to take in your love and the love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his family, his companions and all of those whom you love guide us through the straight path and those of us who are being oppressed throughout the world whether in Kashmir or Palestine or, or uh, Burma or uh, uh, Yemen or Sham or uh, Nigeria or Sudan or any or uh, Somalia or every place else uh, Allah help us and uh, uh, give us victory over over your enemies and the enemies of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayra khalqihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatik ya rahman rahim ربي اشرح لي صدري